Andoya spaceport has a good location for a number of reasons. Number one, due to the fact that it is on an island, open waters towards the north, direct injection possibility for polar orbits. Number two, the heritage of Andoya spaceport through the past activities in sounding rockets. There are people who know the operations overall. And third, but not least, is the infrastructure. Andoya spaceport is close to a airport, but also telemetry ground station like in Svalbard. Europe needs its own spaceport to launch satellites for institutional missions. We have French Guiana, our European institutional spaceport, but overall satellites tend to become more and more small. And in this sense, this is a huge commercial opportunity and the market will drive its success. Increased commercialization of technology and the way we approach the different space programs is a very, very important driver in what is now called new space. We are seeing development of new space systems, new technology, smaller satellites, newer and, and smaller and cheaper space launchers, which are all drivers in this domain. New space is not something that will replace the traditional space technology or space markets, but it's really complementary. Launch of small satellites is a challenge currently. Normally you would have to piggyback on, on a larger satellite and be tied to that particular launch into a particular orbit, which poses certain restrictions on how you, you could actually use your satellites effectively. Worldwide, there is actually a shortage in terms of launch capacity. You can see that in commercial telecom where we have satellites sitting on the shelf for maybe one or two years. So there are a lot of development programs for small and micro launchers. That is needed in order to be able to select both your orbit and also your launch date. Andoya is a, is a very interesting site for creating a spaceport, which would really be a European point for access to space for small launchers and the launch of microsatellites. Andoya and, and Norway has some very favorable geographical features. It's far north, you're able to launch directly into polar orbits. There is a large infrastructure already, there's a large airbase there, and we have been shooting sounding rockets since the 60s in this location. So there are a lot of infrastructure, a lot of uh, competence and knowledge tied to this. The prosperity of space is linked to the use of space application in, in our daily life. Mobile phones, positioning systems, we need it for maritime transportation systems, air transportation systems. Now the prosperity is directly linked to this evolution and any modern society needs space applications more and more. Now for the region of Andoya, it is linked to direct and indirect activities around the spaceport. Space technology is vital to security, sustainability and economic efficiency in today's society and this is not least true for Norway. Satellites are of critical importance for the stewardship of our vast maritime areas. It enables important Norwegian industries such as fisheries, offshore oil activity and maritime transport. We're currently making an assessment of the potential for an investment in a satellite launch site at Omnia and this is because the Norwegian government wishes to do our part to facilitate a commercially viable development of such a satellite launch site. Norway spends approximately 100 million euros on different programs in ESA and EU every year on space. It's increasing and Norway participates in many ESA programs as well as EU programs. Uh, so space industry is uh, becoming more and more important in Norway. New space is emerging and uh, there are a lot of satellites expected to be launched in the coming years. It's increasing year by year and the need for launch capacity is also increasing. So I'm confident that Andoya Spaceport will be an important part of European space industry in the future. <laughs>